Today on the SN95 Owner's Guide, we tackle one of the most frustrating problems with our 5-liter cars, the dreaded no-start. If you're watching this to diagnose a current no-start problem, I know the frustration, jump to the timestamp on the screen to shortcut directly to the process. For the rest that want the whole story, I'll see you after the title. Hello and welcome, I'm Darren and this is the SN95 Owner's Guide. You know, the last 5 liter Mustang rolled off the assembly line over 25 years ago. And one of the most common gremlins to crop up is a no-start condition, especially ones that frustratingly come and go. The cause is usually traced back to one or more ignition components that have simply exceeded their service life. This is more common as the electrical parts become warm and develop intermittent problems and failures. This can leave you stranded on the side of the road wondering what to do next. Well, over the next few minutes, we'll cover the components, the tools you'll need, the tests, and we'll talk about replacement parts. Just before we get to that, I'd like to share that this video is created with support from Ted Jenkins at Tuning Innovations, and I ask you to check out his Facebook page and give him a like, because this video would not have been made without the contribution of his experience and expertise in SN95s. You'll find links to his site in the description below. First off, let's find the parts we're going to be talking about. For this video, we'll be using Fred's 1994 Mustang GT, because it underwent the same diagnostic procedure over the summer and prompted this video. Don't worry if things look a little different on your Mustang, all the parts we're looking at are going to be in the factory locations on Fred's car. Looking under hood, you'll need to know the location of the coil near the power steering pump, the distributor and connector on the front middle of the engine. The TFI module is mounted on the passenger side inner fender. It hides under the stock airbox and can be quickly identified by the aluminum heatsink. On the inside, you'll need to locate the fuse panel near the hood release and the check engine light on the dashboard. We'll also be interacting with the battery, but that should be pretty easy to find. With all the parts identified, onto the tools. At minimum, you'll need a fully charged battery, an LED test light, and a way to check for spark, like an inline spark tester or inductive timing light. With the parts and tools covered, let's get to the diagnostics. To do no-start diagnostics, a vehicle must not start and run, or these tests will all register a pass. Seems obvious, but if it restarts, you'll have to wait for the gremlin to recur before you'll be able to properly test. Assess your system. Looking for an aftermarket ignition box, fully charged battery, and fuel in the tank. Search for obvious harness issues, blown fuses, or a malfunctioning anti-theft system. If any of these are present, bypass the aftermarket ignition, be sure not to skip this, and resolve any other obvious problems. A brief note before we get started. This process is an express shortcut through the official testing procedure and is intended to quickly isolate where you should focus your efforts. It is important if you find a fault to resolve it before advancing to the next tests. We won't get into chasing wiring and pinpoint tests here, but we will cover detailed module diagnosis in a future video. Now with the visual check complete and the disclaimer out of the way, let's get to the good stuff. We start by turning the key to the on position. If you see a check engine light, this means the powertrain control module, or PCM, booted up. This is good. If there's no check engine light, inspect the EEC fuse. This is number 18 in the fuse panel and should be a 20 amp. If the fuse is good, you should look for problems with the PCM and harness. If you have a check engine light, we can check the distributor. Turn the key to crank. If the check engine light goes off, the PCM is getting pip signal. You may also see the tachometer needle jump during this time. This means the distributor pickup is good, if the check engine light does not go off during cranking, inspect the PIP and the distributor. If the dizzy passes, next attach a LED test light from the battery negative or clean ground into the tan yellow coil wire with the key on. It should light up weakly. Crank the engine over. The test light should flash. Not flicker from voltage drop, but actually flash. If it flashes, then a command is coming from the TFI module. If it does not flash, inspect or replace the TFI module. Now we move on to the coil. Test for 12 volt at the coil red with light green wire by placing the test light on the battery negative and back probing the red and light green wire. If the LED does not light up with the key on, locate the reason for the loss of supply voltage at the coil. If all of those pass, test for secondary voltage from the coil 
which is sparked to the distributor using an inductive timing light or EFI safe inline spark tester. With the key on, begin by momentarily applying a jumper from the battery negative to the negative side of the coil to manually trigger the coil. For reference, the negative is the tan wire. Verify there is spark supplied to the DSI. If there is no secondary voltage from the coil, you should inspect and bench test the coil. The last check is a physical inspection of the distributor cap, rotor, and wires. Visually look for problems like carbon tracking, damaged parts, and loose wires. If you can't remember when you did your last tune-up, you might be overdue. Now that you've identified your source of the problem, a few quick notes about fixing the issue. You may have to deep dive once you've identified the failing subsystem. For that, you should look into the Ford Electrical and Vacuum Troubleshooting Manual, or EVTM, for your specific year. They can be found online at a modest price. When it comes to parts, there are a lot of options on the market, and a lot of competition from the performance aftermarket for your money. We've all seen them in magazines, on the internet, and endorsed and Instagrammed, but it's very important that when talking about any Ford vehicle from 1987 to present, there are no better parts than OE Motorcraft. Full stop. Avoid cheap replacements or any performance brand, especially if they're encased in red. Your wallet will thank you. That wraps up on how to identify the root cause of your no-start issue, and it should get you on the right track to enjoying your SN95 again. I'd like to know, did you find this video helpful? Did you solve your problem? And what would you like to see more of? Let us know in the comments down below. We always look forward to hearing back from our fans and also supporting the community. But until next time, thanks for watching, and please like, share, and subscribe.